thing is fast. Love it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, this uh, <laughs> uh, this is not going to end well. Oh boy. I think we better pull over. Yeah. Tell them you were driving. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're talking about the 2015 uh, Corvette Z06. This car is an automatic. Now, I know we usually do manual cars here, but Z06s have always been standard shift cars. And there's such a demand for automatics that they built a Z06 automatic as well as a Z06 convertible. So this is the first on a lot of levels. It's got an eight-speed transmission. Um, we've done manual shift Corvettes before, so I thought, let's, let's try the automatic and see how it looks. And as you can see, someone else has been driving this car as well because the tires are pretty shot. This is a pre-production vehicle. It's not a, this is a test vehicle, essentially. Uh, the automatics are not on the market yet, but maybe by the time this airs. So let's meet uh, uh, a Chevrolet guy. He's a product spokesman or specialist for Chevrolet, Shad Balch. Shad, come on in here. Nice to see you. So nice to be seen. You're a product specialist? Are you an engineer? I'm not an engineer. Okay. I'm a driver. A driver. Okay, very good. I Still the greatest sports car of all time, uh, almost for any amount of money, this new Z06. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it's, for the money, I don't think there's any greater bargain. Now, I have a uh, ZR1, which at the time I was told was the fastest Corvette, 640 horsepower. They never built anything faster than this, and of course, then they come out with this. <laughs> and I'm sure there's something else coming with 800 horsepower down the road. But uh, I've just been reading amazing things. Even the, the English, who are very snarky sometimes about American cars, they love this car too. So, so tell us about it. Tell us what we have here. Tell us what's different from a regular Stingray or a regular production Corvette. I know that the body's a bit wider, correct? It is. This, this basically is a, a race car that is street legal. Right. Literally, the, the Chevrolet Corvette engineers designed this car, the Z06, right alongside the C7R, the race car. Right. Which is, of course, you know, has numerous accolades in the American Le Mans series. So they were serious when they did the Z06 that it was going to be pretty much a race car. Because I remember, uh, was it four years ago, five years ago, when the bailout happened and GM was bankrupt? And Corvette was, that's it. Everything just stopped. There is no C7 coming along. There's no, I mean, it was pretty. Uh, the buzz died, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was pretty scary. And then, uh, you know, there's something like running out of money, nothing like running out of money that makes you get creative and come up with it. <laughs> but I really think that's true, because now GM is run almost totally by engineering. And this car, I've read, just read some amazing things. So tell me, tell me what's different. What do we got here? Well, so basically what the engineers did was they knew that in order to hit the performance attributes that they wanted this car to achieve, they had to start with tires. You got to have the car stick to the ground when it's this light and has this much horsepower under the hood. 650 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque. And how light is it? It is 3,524 pounds wow. for the coupe. This one weighs 58 pounds more. Okay, well, so that's... That's about the same as a P1 McLaren. Now, the P1 McLaren is an all-carbon fiber car, and that's just about 3,000 pounds. That's got 903 horsepower. Uh, but in the quarter mile, the P1 is probably a tenth of a second faster, but it's also another million one <laughs> more expensive. That's what makes this car so amazing. Uh, price aside, this would be an impressive supercar. Uh, once you realize how much cheaper it is and everything in, in it that it competes against, it's, I don't know how they do it for the money. I know this sounds like a commercial, but I'm just such a huge fan of this because it's when you, you make something, uh, when you make a lot of something, you know, you can amortize the cost over a long period of time. The carbon brakes, whatever. This is the best braking automobile, I, at least I think according to road and track, that they've ever tested. Nothing stops as fast as this car. That's correct. And it's, I think it's really a testament to having the, the performance and the professional racing aspect go alongside with mm -hmm. the development and engineering of a production car. They literally take the, from, the, from the aluminum frame to the brakes to the, to the aerodynamic downforce technologies, mm -hmm. they take that from the race car and put it on, on a car that you could buy in a Chevy showroom. Okay. Specific to the, the, the Z06 from the Stingray, the base Stingray is first the tires, Right. Uh, this car is equipped with the Z07 performance package. Mm -hmm. With that, you get tires, brakes, and aerodynamic downforce. Okay, now this obviously looks non 
standard. I'm going to stand it on the on the the high performance package, but right. I'm, I'm amazed. Look at this. The way it's just usually you're so used to seeing these in an airfoil kind of deal, but this is almost straight up and down, isn't it? Right, and it's adjustable here, okay. and uh, it's clear so that you doesn't mess up your blind spots when you all look right. in your rear view. But but all of that, this is part of the technology that keeps this ground this car stuck to the ground. It is the most uh, it has the most aerodynamic downforce of any car that we've put in the wind tunnel. Any production car, not just our own. How about the convertible compared to the coupe, which is... This is, this is the genius part about this car, too, is that the aluminum frame yeah. is everything. Yeah. So the advancements made in learning how to work with aluminum frame has kept the rigidity of it completely solid. In fact, the, the, the uh, removable top on the uh, coupe version of the Z06, which is a first also, mm -hmm. uh, is actually stiffer than with the panel inserted in the old ZR1. Wow. Yeah. Okay. My old ZR1. The old ZR1. <laughs> that old thing. Yeah. Okay, now this has what, a power top on it? Yeah, this has a power top. Which surprises me. I thought they would just put a quick fold down top, but I guess people want a power top. They want a power top. You could yeah. do it on the fly up to okay. about 30 miles an hour. Let's open the hood and show them that engine. You know, people always say, oh, it's the same engine they've been making since. Look at how light that is. I mean, that doesn't weigh anything. Carbon fiber. People all say, oh, it is a whole carbon fiber hood, huh? Carbon fiber hood, yeah. So what are you talking here, 12, 5 pounds, 8 pounds? Something uh, like yeah, that? a little of that after you add some of the sound dampening. Yeah, it's... okay, okay. This is one of the great motors of all time. You know, people always harken back to Ed Cole's original 265 V8 like it's the same motor. I mean, this doesn't bear any resemblance to that other than being a V8 right? Uh, with the with, uh, cam in the block. But you know, a lot of people sort of deride the fact that Corvette doesn't have overhead cams and all that kind of nonsense. Well, not just nonsense, but the idea is with the cam in the block, you can have a much lower center of gravity. You know, when you have twin cams, they're up here. And consequently, you carry more weight up high. This is why this hood, this is probably one of the lowest hoods of the industry because the engine itself is so low. And with the dry sump, which is right here, your dry sump oiling, you have a, a very shallow pan. You can really get it low to the ground. It, it, it's it's pretty amazing how much horsepower this engine makes. And it's a Chevy. You can fix it with a hammer. That's the, yeah. that's, that's, that's the nice thing about it. They're, they're pretty bulletproof engines. It's just unbelievable to me how much power they're able to get out of this. And the, the push rods also, you know, they've allowed us to perfect the active fuel management system where mm -hmm. we deactivate half the cylinders. So it is a performance car. It's meant to go fast, and fuel isn't usually an issue. But... It's also fuel, it gets good fuel economy. Yeah, it gets 30 miles per gallon, doesn't it? It does, and it's part of the, you know, the, the direct injection, the uh, active fuel management, all the technology is legendary for this block. So you, uh, what, you put it in seventh gear, or eighth gear in this one, Right. And you're turning about, what, 1,100 RPM and what, one bank shuts down? Is that how it works? Or yeah. Does it alternate? How does it, it work? It alternates. The computer does the thinking for you. Okay. But basically, yeah, you set the dial to eco mode in the car. Surprisingly, it does have an eco mode. Right. And then it, uh, it, it makes the engine run more efficiently. You know, and the fact that uh, all the manufacturers are able to get this kind of power with the crummy gas we have here in California, with that, it's like the worst gasoline. You can barely light it with a match. It's so terrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it sits for a month and a half or two months, and it just goes flat. It's like, uh, uh, like a beer that's been let out, you know, sitting out on, on the table all day. So, uh, you know, God bless these engineers. They can do this. Uh, yeah, it's pretty compact in here. Um, obviously, your alternator, and you've got air conditioning and everything as well. Yeah, they, you know, the, the, obviously the designers wanted to make sure that they were able to package it all under the hood. So right. there's no protrusion through the hood. Uh, like you said, keeping the low center of gravity in place. And then all of the cooling systems are just, you know, perfectly in line with, with what, need, what it needs to reach. Right, and of course this is just, I'm sure, wind tunnel to death, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. And, the, and now the Z06 package like this, fully loaded, what, about $100,000, something like yeah, that? Yeah, the base car, the base Z06 started at about 80 grand, mm -hmm. and then with the Z07 package, you're up, you know, about eight, nine grand, so about right, 100 right. grand at the end of the okay. day. Okay, yeah, which compared to comparable Porsche, Lamborghini, whatever, that's, it's an amazing car. And it's actually great fun, especially to me as an American, to see this put alongside European exotics that cost two to three times more. I mean, you kind of get that little bit of pride, but yeah, it's made in America, and it's, it's a Chevy, and you can, it's a car you can drive every day. You know, the fun thing about Corvettes is nobody begrudges you for having them. You know, sometimes when you have a fancy sports car, people tend to kind of, eh, look at that guy. 
But at Corvette, you always get the sense that maybe the guy worked hard and he had a business and he, and he kind of earned it for himself. That's kind of what I like about these cars. This is like a working man's dream. Most people can't aspire to own a Ferrari or a McLaren or any car like that. But a Corvette, you know, if you work hard and you play your cards right, you can have one of the great supercars of all time for, well, certainly reasonable money compared to uh, other sports cars out there. Let's go around the back of the car. Let's uh, see what else we have here. One kind of fun thing about the Corvette a lot of people don't realize is how much trunk space they have. You know, most Lambos and whatnot, you got this little, maybe you put a pack of cigarettes in there or whatever, whereas these have a pretty good, pretty good trunk space. It's not bad, especially for the convertible. And, of course, the Stingray Coupe, that's got all kinds of room. Right, a couple sets of golf clubs, that seems to be the, the measurement of success for the trunk space in the Corvette. I'd rather drive than play golf. I don't <laughs> get the golf thing. If you could do it in 20 minutes, okay, maybe. Let's sit there, oh, let's go walk some more. Oh, it didn't work for me. <laughs> but you're right, there's no compromise with the convertible no. from yeah. performance aspect to the practical stuff. Now, this is probably the most controversial view of the car because I meet people that love the new taillights, people hate the new taillights. And it usually goes over 40, they don't like the new taillights, under 40, they do like the new taillights. Right. And it's probably because the old guys want to keep that Corvette continuity of the circular, you know. There's a lot of legacy passion out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it doesn't, I think it's fun. I mean, obviously, they've been proven right because I think the Corvette mark was getting a little uh, gray for a while there. And now it's, look, it's back to, to black <laughs> hair again, except mine has not died. But uh, no, no, I'm teasing. But uh, so what is your feeling? What do you think? I mean, I relate to this. I yeah. look at this and I see a modern supercar. Right, right. And from the people I talk to, once they see it in person, once they follow one, it mm -hmm. changes their, their point of view yeah, entirely. Yeah. No, it is interesting. I like the exhaust as well. It's kind of sexy. And you have your rear, would be a diffuser back here? It is. Yeah, and yeah. and it's, again, it's all functional. Right. So the car is actually, the, with the Z07 package, it's six inches wider in total. Each fender is three inches wider to accommodate the tires. Tail lights are spread out further, so it really has this very wide, stable stance appear to it. Right, and here's your adjustable uh, spoiler here as well. Yep. Uh, can guys really feel that? Can the average guy feel that difference when you move this up and down a little bit? If I the average guy is a good driver, it yeah, makes all yeah, the difference yeah. in the world. But, you'd ha you, but you, it's something you do on a track. You it's could, only on a track. Yeah, you couldn't find it on the street. I wouldn't think so. Right. Cool. All but right. that's, I mean, that's what a lot of features of this car yeah. is that unless you know what to look for or what to feel for, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to know it's there, but it is there. Yeah, yeah. Now, before we take a ride, let's, uh, let's show them how, they, how to put the top down. Yeah, so, definitely. Give it a shot. Go ahead. It's all automatic. We'll do it here from the fob. go simple yeah. yeah I just love watching all the monkey motion how that works it just that's pretty amazing yeah and you could do it up to about 30 miles per hour on yeah. the fly so if it starts raining on you cool. of course not here in LA but you can bring it back up let's take it for a ride sounds good now this car is also equipped with the new performance data recorder okay so I'm going to insert this little disc. Oh, so they give you one of these? Give you one of those. Well, that's not something you could lose easily, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goes in right here. Right. So if a cop stops me, he just takes that disc and we go right we to We have jail. evidence. We have yeah, evidence yeah. of everything. And we'll start recording. So audio and so what, what, what video is it recording? There's an HD camera right on the back side of the review capturing everything that's happening in front of us. Wow. And then you can choose to overlay whatever performance data you want. The idea is, and the purpose of it is to help you hone your driving. Right. Was well, that like a Russian dash cam? I can just see everything? You can see everything. I mean, is that something a person, every time they take the car out, they just leave it on? Uh, or, and does it, how does it work? Well, driving in the streets of LA, you're probably going to get some pretty good footage yeah, if you leave yeah. it on all the time. Right. But no, it's, I mean, it's designed for the track. Right. It's, it's, it really will help you hone in on your driving skills because it'll tell you the car can do more on this turn, so you, can, you should go faster. And how long, how much does it record? Uh, it'll capture 
quite a few hours worth of data. Okay, so yeah. you can just keep switching cards. Everywhere. Exactly. Can you reuse it over and over again? Erase Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Right. And you can upload it to your social media feed oh, I see. immediately. Okay, I <laughs> see. Go. Now they're figuring the split between automatic and standard shift on the Corvette will be 60 automatic, 40 manual, which is pretty good actually. Most manufacturers don't get 40% of the cars being manual because Corvette drivers like to drive their cars. Uh, the automatic is very nice. I prefer the stick just because I like stuff to do while I'm driving. I like to be involved with it. And the automatic probably in a straight line is faster, isn't it? It yeah, is. Yeah. The manual though has the new active rev match. Right. Which helps you with your downshifting. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, this eight speed automatic is actually the same size as the six speed that it replaces. Right. And about eight to 10 pounds lighter. But it's not a dual clutch, right? No. No. Well, you know, it's funny. It's like, what do you have to do to stay in the game? When everybody else had four speeds, some manufacturer had five speeds. Right. And even if your fourth gear was the same gear ratio as their fifth gear, and you had a torquey motor could pull it, no, you just felt like you were getting an extra gear. That's so right. then you got to go to the five speed. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, I applaud Corvette for uh, working on a seven speed manual box, because they could have kept it six speed, and nobody really would have made a, a big deal about it. But the fact that they, they put time and effort into uh, doing a proper manual gearbox, I, I find that uh, commendable. Now the McLaren P1 will do zero to 60 in like 2.6, maybe 2.7. This does zero to 60 in three flat. Okay, so with a million dollar difference, you can live with the three tenths. That shift yeah. is eight hundredths of a second faster. I know, I know. Than I know. the Porsche 911. I can't stop saying it. I know, I know, it's amazing. I hit the limiter there, that's what it was? I think so, yeah. God, I love that snap. It just breathes so nicely, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man. So what are our specs here? Is it a 427 cubic inch? It's a uh, three, 376. 376, so we have, okay. Yep. 376 cubic inch and, of course, supercharged. Right, 1.4 liter. Yeah. 20,000 RPM, which wow. is about 5,000 more than what's on your ZR1. Right, right. Well, it is nicely put together, isn't it? It doesn't rattle or bang or... Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the, the frame is so key for this car. Right, right. So rigid. You just feel it. Europeans always complained about the Corvette interior. I never minded it. I always thought it was okay, but I think they've solved that problem. Everything nicely laid out. It's all about you. Yeah. I'm isolated over here. It's amazing how quiet it is when you're not on it. Yeah, those flapper valves in the exhaust, they really yeah. do a good job. Yeah. The cool thing is this A-pillar here is really strong. This is essentially a roll bar. This will, this will not collapse if you flip this thing over. Because if you flip it over, you're an idiot. But actually, I flipped them over, so I, I can't really do that. I remember it was a big deal when the speedometer said 150. Now they say 220. Yeah. <laughs> So we have what, aluminum frame and carbon fiber, what, hood and what? Hood and roof panel. Hood and roof panel, okay. And then the rocker panels on the side are carbon fiber. Right. A lot of the aerodynamic downforce components are carbon fiber. You think they'll ever do a complete carbon fiber car one day? You think that's next or is that too expensive? The price is still pretty drastic. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it somewhere. Uh, is the, how much lighter is the carbon fiber than this fiberglass? Is that much lighter? Well, it's, it's lighter, but it's also extremely more rigid and right, stiff. Right, true, yeah, yeah. And what brakes do they use? Do they use their own like Chevrolet or is it some... Uh, These are Brembo brakes? Oh, they are Brembo. Yeah. Okay. Carbon ceramic. Right, right. And they're all cooled. All of the exterior uh, inlets and outlets, right. they all serve a purpose. Yeah. amazing car this is. You know, you could have a La Ferrari, you could have 18 of these. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, it, it's really amazing because the difference between uh, this car and any of those other cars is really the driver. 
I mean, a really good race car driver in this car, I honestly believe would blow off the average owner of a P1 McLaren or a LaFerrari or any of those cars. That's why this car is such, most people cannot make this car do what it can do. That's the amazing thing. You, you get a car like this and you can have it 10 years and never know the limits of it because the limits are so high, certainly on the street anyway. Uh, but it's, it's amazing. It's a car you can drive to the track and beat the hell out of it and then drive it home again. Tires get a little pricey though. They do indeed. Tires, Tires and get brakes. a little pricey. Come on, let's head back. Man, this thing is fast. Love it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> uh, this is not going to end well. Um, see you guys next week. Oh, boy. I think we better pull over. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them you were driving. He was driving, it wasn't me.